Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Just Flight BAE-146, but more importantly, the Thrust Modulation System. So if you would like to know more about that, stay tuned for today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back everyone. So today we're going to be talking about this little piece of hardware down here called a CDU or a control display unit. Now, while we're going along in today's video, if anybody has any questions, please post it down below in the comments section and I'll get right back to you. While you're down there, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick that little bell and smash on that thumbs up button. It really helps us out and gets us found by viewers like yourself. So before we get into the TMS unit or the thrust modulation system, I first would like to go over what the thrust modulation system is and then we're gonna go over what you can expect in today's video. The thrust modulation system consists of a control display unit on the instrument panel and a computer controlled actuator on each engine. Now that controlled the engine thrust by adjusting within a limited range. So the engine power setting has to be selected by the flight crew to get it within range so the TMS can then take over. Again, we're gonna get into this a little more in the episode. First, what we're gonna be going over is a general overview of the CDU itself, and then we're gonna break down each individual option of the CDU, and then explain how that can be used in practical flight. So let's start at the very top of the CDU, and we're gonna work our way to the bottom. Over here in the top left corner, this little window is going to provide either an N1 or N2 value, as well as a TGT value for us. To the right of that, this is where we're gonna set our takeoff reference air temperature. And we're gonna be inputting the ambient air temperature into this field. Below that, we have buttons one through four. Well, they're really not buttons. They're more like uh, displays one through four. And this is going to correspond to the particular engine, either one through four. In this location is where we can expect to see an up arrow or down arrow to know whether we need to increase throttle or decrease throttle to get it within range of those actuators. Again, more on that in just a little bit. Below that, we have two rows of options. So on the first row, starting at the left, we have the takeoff button. We're gonna use this for, of course, when we take off. And what this is gonna do is set the proper takeoff power setting for the ambient air temperature we set above. We can also use this as kind of a flex temperature. And again, we'll get into more of that here in a little bit. To the right of that, we have the MCT button, and that stands for maximum continuous thrust. Next, we have the TGT button, and this is going to maintain a certain TGT temperature that we would set down here below. We can also reference any TGT temperatures over here on the left on any of the four TGT gauges. Next to that, we have the descent button, and we're gonna use this, of course, when we start our descent. Now the purpose of this is so that the aircraft does not go to a complete idle, but maintain a certain percentage so that we do not lose hydraulic pressure. The last row down, starting over here on the left, we have the sync button, and this is going to allow us to sync all of our engines together. To the right of that, we have the control button, and this is also gonna be used in conjunction with the sync, and this is where we're gonna be able to set whether we're gonna be using the N1 or N2 percentage. Depending on which one we choose here, that's what one is going to show in this box up here in the top left. To the right of that, we have the master button, and here's where we can choose either to use engine number one or engine number two as our master engine to sync with. So again, all three of these buttons must be used in conjunction with each other to work. And lastly, we have the power button, self-explanatory, power on, power off. Below that, we have the test button here, and let's press that so you can get an idea of what everything's gonna look like. All right, and over here to the left of the test button is our TGT temperature. And again, that is something that we can set manually for when we're using the TGT option. So now that we've gone through the overview, let's dive a little bit deeper into each one of these settings. So the first option that we're gonna talk about today is the TO button, and that's gonna be the takeoff option. To be able to use this option, you first wanna make sure that you are on the runway and ready for takeoff. 
Next, you're gonna make sure that the unit is powered on by the power button. Do is to make sure that you have the proper outside ambient air temperature loaded here above. If not, you can go ahead and set that now. And once you have your takeoff clearance, we can go ahead and tap on the takeoff button. Once we do, you're gonna notice a couple things that are gonna happen here. And in the upper left-hand corner, this is gonna display our N1 target percentage that the TMS is gonna to try to attain. Also note that if we change the outside ambient temperature, that it will change our N1 percentage. So that's why I said earlier that you can use this as sort of a flex temperature by increasing this by 10 degrees will help save on the engines in the long run. Below that we can see we have the up blue arrows on engines one through four. This is telling us that we need to increase throttle on those engines. And once we see those arrows go out, that tells us that we have the throttles in the appropriate position for the actuators to then take over for the TMS system. And if we take a look over here on the left hand side, we can see that the TMS is now trying to get all of these engines synced up to 92.9%. Pretty cool. Next to the takeoff, we have the MCT button, the maximum continuous thrust. To activate it, all you need to do is to tap on the button and it will now display the maximum continuous thrust TGT temperature up here in this window. And what this is gonna do is to allow us to run at a maximum thrust for this aircraft. So one might ask when you would wanna use maximum continuous thrust, and the only time I can pretty much think of is if you really need to make a climb out of an area and you need to do it as fast as possible, you can set it to maximum continuous thrust to get up to your cruising altitude. Because again, you can only use your takeoff thrust for about four or five minutes, I believe. So next to the MCT button, we have the TGT option. To use this option, we must set our TGT temperature down here below. That's also gonna correspond to our TGT gauges right over here on the left. So one might ask why I would wanna use the TGT option on the CDU. Well, for me, I like to use it as sort of an auto throttle to keep my speed at a constant speed while I'm up in the air cruising. So how we would do this is to set the TGT temperature that will allow the aircraft to maintain your current speed. So to try to figure out what temperature you wanna set here, Now, for some reason, you go a little bit too high and you overthrottle that the actuators cannot bring that back, you're gonna see the down arrow displayed on the engines that are a little bit over revving. So you just wanna pull back on the throttle a little bit until the down arrow goes away. Once we do that, the TMS can then take over from here. It will now try to maintain that target temperature of 660 degrees set for the TGT. When you do adjust the TGT temperature here, it will disarm your TGT option. You then need to come back in and re-hit the TGT button, and then it will now maintain your new set temperature. So the button over here to the right is the descent button. What that's gonna do is maintain an N1 percentage of 60%. This way we won't lose any hydraulic pressure. But remember, this aircraft is study level, so if we were to turn on some of the options above, let's go do that right now. Now that we have turned on some of the anti-ice, let's take a look down below. You'll notice now that the TMS has adjusted our N1 percentage to 67% now that we have a higher draw on the electrical system. All right, so that takes care of the second row. Let's move down to the last row here and go over the sync features. Again, this is gonna allow us to sync all of our engines to a particular engine and to either our N1 or N2 values. So to activate the sync, we're just gonna hit the sync button and a couple things we're gonna notice on the screen. Under the control, you're gonna see that we are using the N1. If you tap on this, it will now switch to N2. Next to the control, we have master and here's where we can choose either engine one or engine two to be used as our sync master. To switch, all you need to do is tap on the button 
and it will switch to engine number two. The other thing that you're gonna notice when we're using the sync feature is that none of the arrows from one to four are really gonna work anymore because it's all gonna be based on where you are gonna set your throttle system. So let's show you how this is gonna work right now. Once we start increasing our throttle, take note of the N1 percentage up here in our top box. This is gonna display the N1 percentage for our master engine, and that's gonna be the engine number one. So if we take a look over here to all of our N1 percentages, the TMS is now trying to regulate these so that they are all set at 67%, which is where our engine number one is set to. Oh, and one last thing, at the very bottom of the CDU is the dimmer knob, and this is where we can adjust some of the backlighting, as you can see, for the CDU. I forgot to go over this in the overview. So now that we have gone over the entire unit and we've talked about each one of the options, I think that's going to just about wrap us up for today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please post those down below in the comment section, and I'll get right back to you. If you haven't done so already, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. Look at this guy over here. To all of my flight server friends around the world, keep the blue side up. We will see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.